All right. Last time we were on the uh, chapter about the two chord, yes? Unit 19. Mm hmm. So the two chord, I want you to know, is sometimes called the predominant. And it comes before the dominant. The dominant. We talked about that in the past. I believe we did the jazz two five one chord progression for you to hear. So today I want to go on to unit twenty, which is the six chord. Let's do a little um, sight reading on page 256. You said you were doing a 2 6 chord? We're talking about the, the 6 chord now. Oh, well, not the 6 chord, but okay. Yesterday, last uh, time was the 2 chord, this time is the 6 chord. Okay. With, with the 2, I, I was just testing to see if I could work those out. Um, on, on page 248. That Hanukkah in E uh -huh. flat. Yeah. Has a two six. Yeah. Would that be E flat G C? Yes, it, E flat G C. Yes, that's correct. Okay. And the F seven or the five seven? Would that be E flat F A? A, E flat, F. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Well, it would be F, A, C, E flat. Let me show F, you real quick. F, A, C, E flat, but then when you drop the C. Yeah. Then, and you move the, you move the E flat back. I like to play oh, oh, it. Oh, and you say you have to move the A back too. Right? I made a mistake. So you, you so. E flat F, right? A E flat F, that's right. A E flat F. Okay, good. So that's why I want to check and see if I had that down right, but I did make a little mistake on that. Yeah, I like to play it as the five six five. E flat F. Okay. All right. So at least I'm catching on now to some of those. Yeah. How to, how to do some of those. That was that. I spent a lot of time. Trying to figure figure that out. Good. Okay. So now we're on what page? Two fifty six. Two fifty six. It's an eight bit integer. I'm so jealous of <laughs> of, of like uh, Benjamin. Like yesterday when you were talking about all the chords and you just whipping them off, you know. Oh yeah, it's, it's on. No problem. I see it. <laughs> You'll get there. There is a wonderful thing, but jealousy is not. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there when you take theory. All right. Looking at ten dot thirty seven. What key are we in? Yeah, I, I, oh, 1037. We started in a D and we have two sharps, yeah. so it's D major. D major. D. D. Last time you got me, it's like, oh, we got to start actually looking at uh, scale quality or the mm -hmm. mode, I guess. And what would our six chord be in D major? Yeah. I mean, a B. The chord? Yeah. So it'd be no e. so so F A B C F A C B B minor F A wait a minute. E minor? B minor? Because B, B is two letters below D. Oh, okay, yeah, because D goes to A, so it's just so six would be E. Okay. Right. Let me do it on my board to make sure we're all on the same page. Hmm. 
Ei, não precisa disso. E, e, e B. Yeah, B. Has to be B. B is our six. You guys, are all you guys are all tricking me. I don't know where you got the E from. Has <laughs> to start with B, right? Mm -hmm. Right. B, D, so F. One thing that might help some of you is I made this chart. I want to show you it and see what you think of it. Oh, is it the charty chart chart? The charty chart chart <laughs> it is. What do you think about the charty chart chart? It's a great name for it. There was a there was a thing you showed off in theory, uh, theory two I think it was that was uh, what chords go to what. It was like a flow chart. I yeah. have a summer one of my notebooks, but don't remember where. Okay. So. E D F sharp actually. That'd be that'd be cool to see at some point, but I don't know. It's really what you're talking about right now no but i can we can we can talk about that it, it correlates doesn't it yeah yeah uh, that that helped me a lot uh, in in my composition because it, it gave me some kind of roadmap yeah i want to fit a three chord in here to be spicy how do i do that that kind of thing <laughs> all right in this in this student manual which i can post i still think um I still think I have not done that. At the bottom of this is what I call the charty chart chart. And I think Christian's seen it. And I know Ben's seen it. And I think uh, Jesus has seen it. I know Alex has seen it. But I don't know if Ed, uh, Edison and Ludmilla have seen it. So this might be worth downloading and printing out. What I did with mine is I laminated it so that I could write on it with a dry erase marker and mm -hmm. erase and reuse it. So what this does, Edison, is it doesn't have any sharps or flats on it, but it gives you all the triad notes that you should be finding. So we are in D major. So what I would do is I would come down here and I would put a capital Roman numeral one in my bottom box for D. And I'd put a Roman numeral four for my G, also capital, and a Roman numeral five capital for D major. I know that my two chord is minor, so I have a lowercase, and I have I know my three chord is minor, so I have a lowercase. Same with six. And seven is diminished, so I have lowercase plus the diminished degree symbol. So my original question was, what's the sixth chord? Well, if you had this, you had your one written in, you would know, ah, my sixth chord is some kind of B, D, and F. Mm. Now, I didn't put the sharps in, so you could use this for sharps or flats. You got to add the accidentals. But that's it's kind of like a decoder for what whatever key I'm in. Nice. Does it make sense? Yes. Now, I have a big, thick black line, and the note above that note is would be included if we had a seventh chord. So if I had an, a dominant seventh, for example... It would be A, C sharp, E, plus the G above that dotted line. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that would help you as you guys try to figure out these chords. I know it'll help you in theory when you get there. I give it to all my theory students. But I just wanted to make you all aware of this chart. And then if I change keys, clear my screen. My new key is the key of A, so A is going to be my one. Oops. A would be my new one. My four would be D. My five would be E. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So you can use this chart over and over and over. So I like to laminate it so I don't have to keep erasing. Mm -hmm. 
you could just go into a FedEx Kinko's or Office Depot or a UPS and they could laminate it for you. What do you think, Edison? Well, <clears throat> yeah, because I'm building the pieces of that chart every time that I have to work with this stuff. Exactly. You know, because like I'm, I'm looking down here and, and I already have on, on my, you can't see my page, but I have E, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. So I've written that out already. Yeah. And from that, I can grab all these things. That, but that's just what you did. That's on your picture there. Right. You just started with D and then you have that. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's kind of nice instead of having to keep writing it out. To exactly. A little, little time saver calculator for the Roman numerals. Absolutely. I remember so, when we used to use slide rules. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's basically that, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what a slide rule is? Oh, I mean, sure, sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad had one. Yeah. Oh, your dad. Okay, your dad had one. Because <laughs> they haven't been used for a long time. Right. When I was, when I was studying math, we had a day uh, where my calcul my calculus two professor brought one in just to kind of show off. Hey, this is what people used to use. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a relic of the past. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to upload that to the file section of Canvas. And it's going to be listed as 1A, 7A, student manual. And this manual is like 63 pages long. So it's got a lot of info in it and a lot of stuff that's not going to make any sense until you get to theory or ear training with me. And it's going to be. What's that? Say that again, Luda. What name will be, uh, how it will be named to that file? It'll be named 1A7A Student Manual. If you look at my screen right now, this is the file name right here. See at the top? 1A7A Student Manual. I use this manual for 1A, which is theory, one and 7a which is ear training one and i teach both those classes right now well, you teach both of them yeah okay so like last semester you weren't teaching theory last year no I, I still taught it but well i thought i taught theory two oh, theory, theory one theory one in the fall theory two in the spring oh we didn't see your name on theory one that's fine huh yeah it should be there uh, and like I said in the past, I've made a recording, a video recording of all my theory classes, and they're on YouTube under Doc B Theory. D O C B T H E O R Y. So you can go back and watch all my old classes. Hopefully, they'll make sense. <laughs> so we could prep this summer for theory for theory next next fall. We could look at some of those ahead of time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starting to get um, emails from people that are not associated with Fresno City College that are watching them. So it's kind of fun. Except that this summer, I'm going to try and see if I can catch up to what we were supposed to learn this semester. <laughs> well, there's a little bit of overlap, I think. Okay, so that was fun. A little tangent to help you. Realize that we are looking for B, D, F sharp as our six chord. And so my question for you is in 10-37, where is that six chord? B, B, B. Oh. How about uh, five? Measure five. Yes, where? Pardon? You are right. Which half? Which one? Which half? The second half of measure five. You are right. Indeed. Yeah, the first half is a D major chord, and the second half oh, is isn't a D that minor. D D? You got it. 
B, it's B, E, F, D, B. You got it. Right in the beginning of that. Right? It also happens in the second half of measure one. Does everybody see second that? Half of measure one. F, D. And it's second half. Okay. Second it's the exact half. same measure. Measure one and measure five are identical. Well, if they're the identical, but oh, D. You look at my screen, I've circled both of them. Now, I also want to tell you that the two chord is in here. Where is that two chord? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now I messed up. Like, I made a mistake on that. Measure four. If, yeah. Wait, no. No, never mind. Uh, we're looking for... Oh, measure two at the beginning. Yeah? yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we have a two chord here. Yeah. And a six chord here. Yes. And guess what, Ben? We get it right here in measure six as well. Yeah. But but that's B D F though, that's backwards. Oh no, that's what we're looking for. B D F. Okay. Right. B D F. Right. Yeah, B D. Okay. So we have a one, a six, a two, and a five. So, Ben, let's go over to your question real quick. Your question was, where's that flow chart that gives what chords can go to what chords? And the answer is, it's in our theory textbook, which you should still be able to access because you can access it for like four or five semesters in a row. So McGraw-Hill Connect, you might have to go to your old Canvas class, I'm not sure. I think I only got the, the year-long subscription, actually, because I only intended to take like the one or two levels of theory. And I, I don't go think there, there is a year subscription. Well, oh, no, I was thinking of Aurelia. Right. I right, think right, I actually right. did get the lifetime key of the, of the book. So this is like a four or five semester um, yeah. access. So this was chapter seven, and it was yeah, that. That's it right there at the top. So here is that graphic. Did you get it? Yeah. And then there's another graphic one page yeah. later that has the same thing but in minor. Cool. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> it's like totally I just I just remember that you said one one to six and four to two and five to three. Yeah. So let me try to explain it just lightly. I don't want you to worry too much about it. But what this chart does is this chart tells us which chords can go to which chords. And you'll dive deeper into this in theory. But this dotted line right here says that the one chord can go anywhere it wants. The one chord can go to any number. doesn't matter. The six can go to the two. The two can go to the five, and the five can go to the one. And the one can go wherever it wants, including the six. So the piece we're looking at right now goes from a one chord to a six chord to a two chord to a five chord, and it follows this, this pattern. Let me, let me undo my writings, Luda, so you can get a clean shot of it. Try, take it one more time, Luda.
One of the things I remember with this is generally, not always, but generally, chords go to other chords by either uh, going up one or down one, I guess stepwise, or moving in fourths and fifths. But not always, because like two to seven, right. I mean, one to six, but three to six. Yeah. Luda, let me give you the minor one. It's on the this next looks page. Like that on the picture, it looks Thank like you. five goes to four and one. Um, five goes to six and one. Let me go back to that one and I'll. Five, five goes to one. Five can go to six. That's called a deceptive cadence. Do you know five. what that's? Do you know well, what it sounds like? It was five going to the three was to seven. No, that's the substitution. Three and five can substitute for each other. Three and five can substitute. Oh, and the deception was, man, I, was, I must have put my notes down wrong. Okay. So that's what Ben was asking about. So let's head back. And what does deceptive mean? It's like it's not the distinctive. No, it means it fakes you out. I'll play one for you. Tricks you. It deceives, <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm gonna play Happy Birthday, Luda. When's your birthday? <laughs> In summertime. Yeah, me too. I'm a summer baby. Okay, I'm gonna play Happy Birthday with a deceptive cadence. Mm First, I faked you out. You thought I was going to end. But I didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, so reg regular is the one. The cheerful. <laughs> Say again. Luda? Instead of uh, cheerful and uh, going to down. Right. Down. Sound going down. Yeah, instead of going to the tonic like we're used to, like it's all over, the end, it says, but wait, there's more. And it goes to an unstable pitch, an unstable chord, the sixth chord. And that's what's called a deceptive cadence. And we can't end there and die happy. We have to have a sense of completion and finality and get back to our home key. So that's what the deceptive cadence does, which is the five to the six, major five. Back to the, the six is deceptive. Yeah, major five to minor six is deceptive cadence. That's deceptive. So on four, then deceptive is not to two. Deceptive is to five to six. Five to six, but what about four? Four as a deceptive? No. No deceptive. Four. For four. Four is not four to one is a cadence called the plagal cadence or the amen cadence, but okay. four to two is not a cadence. Cadences are kind of like punctuation in in the language and sentences. Um and we want periods like four to one. The so four to two is just regular. It's just chord but, motion, yeah. It's not a it's cadence. Strange. And one to one to six is just a switch. So, but you can do deceptive for, from one. Nope, from five to six. That's the only deceptive. That's the only deceptive. Ah, so that's where. Okay, so, no, I fixed my notes. <laughs> I had them all screwed up. So there's yeah, only one deceptive. Yeah, don't confuse yeah. cadences with substitutions. That's the same. Right. What's two is deceptive. I thought we had put that in there as a deceptive. No, four and two substitute for each other. Four and two substitute for each other. Three and five substitute for each other. And six and one substitute for each other. But those are not cadences. Okay, so all we've been doing really is doing substitutions. Correct. 
mention that there was a, a deceptive, but we've been yeah. doing substitutions. We're not doing deceptives. Correct. Okay. You could, you could put a deceptive cadence as one of your substitutions. Okay. And that, that happened in for he's a jolly good fellow, I believe. <laughs> Right there when I went five to six. Yeah, and that's that's the part where I got messed up in my notes. Ah, uh, okay. In the jolly. And yeah. The jolly so you could so. you could put a substitution in that is a deceptive cadence by going five to six. Okay. Substituting six for the one. Yes. Okay. All right. That clarifies that. You know what a phrase is in music. Me? Like what a mu do you know what? Obviously you do. That's good. Edison, do you know what a musical phrase is? It's like a just a piece of the music. It's like you know, it, it's um, in a lot a lot of times in our sheet music, it's denoted by having a slur over a series of notes that lasts a few measures, like two or four. Those are typically really nice numbers. Cadences tend to only really happen at the end of phrases, but not. Yeah, you know, but a cadence doesn't happen at the end of every phrase, right? So you're only going to find cadences at the end of phrases, but not every end of phrase has a cadence necessarily. Does that make okay. any sense? So well, you're playing, you're playing phrase, not with the cadence. Yeah. Well, I mean, like it's. I I know I just said the same thing twice, right? But um. Uh, it's. The best definition, I think, is comparing it to a sentence. Yeah. And a cadence, a cadence is the whole sentence and a no, phrase. The phrase is the sentence. The cadence is the punctuation. It's either a comma or a period. Or a question mark. That, that's what I'd say um, a deceptive cadence would be. Sure. So I'm going to play a song, and I want you to raise your hand every time you hear a cadence, and you'll start to feel them. You'll start to hear them. Right? So they're kind of like resting points. Or... So sometimes you can think that you're coming to a cadence, but the person can just keep on rambling and yep. then get to the cadence. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because I noticed a couple of points there. Like, oh, I was about ready to raise yep. my hand. I just kept going. But it wasn't the harmonic goal. So yeah. cadences are so kind of a so goal. To... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So those are cadences, and cadences happen at the end of phrases. Cool. All right. So back to 10.37. We found that we had a six chord going on there and a two chord going on there. And the same thing repeats over here. We have an Alberti bass pattern, which is what it's called. We play the fifth, the root, the fifth, the third, the fifth. Doesn't necessarily have to be in that order, but there's an alternation between the chord tones. What do you notice in the melody? I see a skip and a skip. I see a big leap. Skip. What's going to be hard about this melody? That's six. 
Yeah, that leap. Good. What else? I think the trickiest part about this melody is going to be the rhythm. Why? Did you say the rhythm? Yes. <clears throat> well, it's not just quarters or eights. There's variety. Yeah. It's, dare I say, interesting. <laughs> We've got a dotted <laughs> quarter note. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One E, yeah. Duh. Actually, no. Uh... One, pie, two, apple pie, pie, mm. pie, 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 apple pie, 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 apple pie, 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 pie. So on the pie app, I like to throw my hands out so I'm not late for the eighth note that follows it. Left hand rhythm's easy. Apple, 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 apple. Until our pie, pie at the end. For a challenge, try tapping both hands at the same time. And count your right hand rhythm. Pie, pie, apple pie, 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 apple pie, 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 apple pie, 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 pie. Pie, 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 pie. Off. All right, let's try shadow playing it. So don't let your piano make any noise. Okay, I am going to share my screen like I had it yesterday almost. And I'm going to shadow play it on the screen. Okay. 
you have your hand set up? Yeah, ah, that's why we shadow play right there, isn't it? And C sharp, yep. Let's try playing it. I'm going to play it really slow. One, two, ready, let's go. How did we do? I muted you all so I can't hear any of you. What do you know now that you wish you would have known before? What would you warn the next class about? Did you pick up that the left hand is just your chord progression? But in Alberti e bass? the six chord and the two chord we had a lot of hand position changes didn't we particularly in the left hand that's the part that kind of got me okay hmm. I wasn't really ready for that five so uh, beat Three on, on measure three, yeah. Measure <coughs> three, yeah, and it also being a black note is tricky. Yeah. Good. So that's the thing that I think we don't look for enough is when when we are changing, when we do change, and we have sharps and flats. Anything else? Okay, how how is waltz going for everyone? So good. Slowly getting there. For me, the waltz is coming along easier than all the rest of this stuff. <laughs> like Good. All, all these um, chord progression, well, I mean, these um, what is, harmonizations. Harmonizations. 
to me, they're just like doing another waltz. I have okay. to learn it all. Yeah. So it's really complicated for me. Yeah. Uh, and then I had to go back. I thought it was, see, I really worked hard at getting the majors done. And I thought I got them done. But then you showed me that I, I did the, the second one wrong. And the way I did the second one, it was so easy. <laughs> because I just I just played F, right? And just put in the right, um, back, you know, the right sharps and flats. But now that it, I'm really having a hard time with my left hand. All right, let's look. You want which yeah. one should we do? Should we do E flat? Well, I mean, it doesn't matter which one I'm doing. Okay. I, just, I still let's... have, you know, I I, I have to. I'm, I'm just still working on, on, I think on B because that starts with three, two, one, three, two, one, and then four, three, two, one. No. So. It, okay. Pardon? No. No. B flat. You said. Yeah. B flat, B flat starts three two one four three two one. Wait wait a minute. B two one four three two one. Correct. Four three two one. B flat. So let me tell you a funny story. One. I had an adult student. And it goes four two one. Four three two one. Four. Four, three, two, one, back to three. What? Why did? Why did three, two, one, three, two, one, and four, three, two? See, I did it back. So I was. So I'm even practicing it wrong. So that was going three, two, one, three, two, one, four, three. Well, let's get you fixed. So wait a minute. You're saying it's three, two, one, four, three, two. One. That's right. Then listen, back to, listen to my funny story. Oh, actually, that's a little easier to do. It's or maybe easier to remember. It's almost the same thing. I had a student, an adult student, one, who was really struggling with the B flat major scale. One. Now, how many black keys are there? Four, three, two, one, three, two, one. Yeah, actually, that's 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 easier than what I was misdoing it. How can I write it down wrong? How many black keys are there? Anybody? Know. B flat major. How many black keys? No one knows. There are two black two. keys. Okay. So I want to show you this, but this student was having a hard time with the scale. Oh, Luda's got it. And she ended up painting her fingernail of her left hand three and her right hand four the same color. And she painted the finger of her left hand four and her right hand three the same color because they always come together. On the black keys, does that make sense? So I've done it with students. I've painted their fingernails with highlighters so that they match. So perhaps, Edison, a good practice exercise is just to play your black notes. Three and four, four and three, three and four, four and oh. three, three the, and four, four and three. The best thing for me to do four, would be four to four and three, three and four. Numbering correctly. But that's a good you know, preliminary exercise to help you in that. I, I copied the number three, two, one, three, two, one, but it should be three, two, one, four. Three. Another exercise I like to do is to look at these exchanges. There's a one, two exchange and a one, two, three exchange. And I like to block it that way. Four and three, two, one, one, two, four and three, 
Three, two, one, one, two, three. Three and four. Two, one, one, two. Four and three. Three, two, one, one, two, three. Three and four. It's a great way to practice it, and then you just pick them apart one at a time. So keep working on those. We're out of time today. We can revisit group three, though, tomorrow if it would be beneficial. For E flat, A flat, B flat, they're the trickiest of them. Well, I'm glad we talked about that because, man, I've been practicing it all, all wrong again. All right, we'll do it again tomorrow. So I'll That's see you worst. all tomorrow. Thank you. You're welcome. See you later, Dr. B. Bye-bye.